Good morning, welcome to Something Saturday. Ooh, let's just make sure that has focused. Yay, all good. Right, so today I thought we would have a quick look at the Zoo Crew Suite. Um, it's so cool. It's funny because normally this sort of thing doesn't really appeal to me all that much. And yet for some reason it did. So go figure, as they say. Um, all right, so Zany Zoo Bundle is part of it. So you get the stamps, voila, and you also get the um, dies. So the dies cut out the varying different images, as you can see. Uh, that one's there. That one's there. That one's there. And then you also get these extra images as well. So you've got a nice little um, scallopy piece. You've got a piece of curtaining. You've got a flag, a couple of balloons, some flowers, a little flower pot. Not sure what those are. They look like sausages, <laughs> which potentially they could be. I really have no idea what they're for. Um, I'm not sure whether I'll use them. They could be eyebrows, actually. <laughs> um, OK, a couple of trees, a couple of flowers and this, that. You know what? I thought it was a t um, TV aerial, an old fashioned TV aerial to begin with. But I don't think that's what it's for. <laughs> I think it's probably meant to be a little stool for, say, her to dance on or him to stand on or something like that. But, you know, I guess it could be used for whatever you wanted it to be used for. So TV aerial, here we come. <laughs> Possibly not today, though. Um, so the other things in the suite are ribbons and papers. So let's just pop that away a minute. And oh, look at that. We've got it all under here. Surprise, surprise. There's the dies. There's the stamp set. Um, so here's the ribbons. It always, always amazes me how Stamping Up managed to end up with ribbons that are so beautifully soft. So this one uses petal pink I think is the colour in this one and then we've got one of the new returning colours of lemon lime twist in this colour so they're a nice combination um, let's pop that to one side and these so there are they obviously come as 12 by 12 well it's not obvious but hey the size of this you'd kind of hope that it was fairly obvious that um, I've cut some of mine down at the moment because I'm using them for varying different things. You will find that the dies, let's see, where's the die for this one? There it is. The dies fit. Yay! And each page of the de designer paper has one die that coordinates with it. So obviously this one coordinates with him. And... Then I kind of like the little koala in this one. I think he's quite quite cute. Um, and then we've got this one. And the die that coordinates with this one is the little knitting sheep, I guess. And this one, the die that coordinates with this is the uh, little singing turtle. Because, you know, all turtles sing. Um, then we've got him. Little riding a bicycle croc. Oh, that was the first one. And which one goes with? Oh, OK, no, we've done that one already. Um, then this one is the one that coordinates with this die. And lastly, this one coordinates with this die, with the die. Um, on the other side are just plain black and white images. So let's just show you. So potentially you could colour those in, um, you could go over the background with the um, the uh, blending brushes and colour in, you know, different colours. That's not a bad idea, actually. I hadn't thought about that until just now. Um, and then that one, that one and that one. There we go. So that is all the papers. And I'm just going to tuck those away. Just pop those down there. 
put those over there and oh I've got a little tiny fly I hope he's not gonna sit there in front of the thing um, okay so then I was going to show you what I have created so far so I made up a little stage using the um, uh, the little scallop die and the um, and the curtains and we've got a couple of little I'm not too sure what this is supposed to be but I'm fairly confident that that one's a tiger <laughs> I could be wrong <laughs> Um, this was the one that um, in my last class we actually created this one um, I also made up that one and haven't quite finished this one off yet so that's a couple of options there as well and if you spend over $75 with me this month then you'll actually get a tutorial in with a whole bunch of other tutorials and this one is in that tutorial then this is the one that i thought i would show you how to make today so i thought after having done my little stage here i was thinking how cool would it look if the stage was actually in the background of the curtains so that is what I have to show you today and as you can see it's just like that. Right, let's pop everything to one side and I will show you how to create this. You are going to need a sheet of paper to begin with, cardstock even. So we are going to go with my thick white cardstock. So I keep all my cardstock in these sort of wallets and, and I just have written on them what they are. So then that way I've got my neutrals colours in one and my brights colours in another and subtles and whatever the other one is. Regals, that's the word. Um, and then my in colours have two separate folders for each um, set of five. Let's pop that down there. So you need to have your cutter and you want to cut your A4 paper in half to begin with. So at ten and a half, always make sure when you're cutting that you have, this is absolutely butted up straight against that side because if it's got even a little bit, you're going to end up with a wonky looking card and you don't want that. So push it up straight up to the 10.5 and cut it off. So with these cutters, you've got a light grey and a dark grey. And in fact, the light grey has a bump on top of it as well. And the dark grey, oh, never noticed that before. Huh, actually has like a little arrow on it. But the little bump means that it's the, um, the scorer. Hmm. There you go. Now I'm curious to know whether that's the same on my other one. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, they do say you learn something new every day, don't they? All right. So I now want to score this cardstock at one centimetre. So I'm going to pop it back this way and take it to the one centimetre mark and score. Just make sure you don't cut that you score. So one centimetre, then I'm going to turn it round because I actually then want it to be at 14 and a half. And 15 and a half. So just making sure again that it's all up against the edge. And then we're going to extend the arm because I actually want it to go all the way down to 29, which is way down here so 29 there we go so the reason I've scored it like that is because I actually want to have the join on the side as opposed to somewhere in the middle because if you have it in the middle of the card it's going to show through the background of it um, whereas if you put it on the side it's really not that obvious which is kind of nice all right so let's put that away. 
Now with this card, I've actually used these dies here, which are the deckled rectangle dies. And if you have any, pretty much if you have any sort of like large die that would fit nicely inside this, it, it would be fine. So you just want to create the um, the aperture for the um, for the little dancers to go through or, you know, whoever it is that's going to be on your stage. So when you fold your card, um, eventually when we put it together, we actually want the long side over top of the short side because it's going to look better on the side that way if it's, um, you know, if the, there's only one join and you just see it right at the very corner. Anyway, I am just trying to remember which one I used. I think I used the third one down. That looks about right. So what we'll do is we'll run this through the um, stamping cut and emboss machine. Which is here. you care to fit so aim to um, go for about the middle of the middle just um, keep an eye on where your score lines are because if you put it too far over to one side it doesn't look so great especially if you're um, adding a board around the outside of it There we go. Wait. Take that off and that off. And put that to one side for the time being. And just bring it back, fold it, just make sure that looks about right which it does so that's good okay so with the curtains what i'll do is i will cut the curtains and show you how i've attached those so i think i'm going to bring the changes and maybe go with some of this color for the curtains let's just pop these to one side So, spot of cherry cobbler for the curtains. I always think it's when you go to the cinema, it always looks lush, doesn't it? With um, with a deep colour curtain, they usually have um, a red or a dark blue or something like that. Hey, in the the other day, I was listening, uh, no, watching something um, on facebook or i don't know somewhere and it was telling me that um originally when when they built theaters they didn't have the all the theater lights that we have these days and so they actually used to have um oh now i forget the name of it but it's called quick climb that's what we would know it as um and um and they were saying that they actually had that because it glows so they would put quick lime onto the stage and the saying um, in the limelight that's where it comes from so there you go don't tell me that you never get an education when you watch my um something saturday video <laughs> i thought that was kind of fascinating so the way that i have actually added the curtains because i wanted them to look like they were actually behind the um, the front of the stage as it were is i've actually just put them in behind there like that so you can build up where's my my silicone mat and my tombow glue so just pop some dots of tombow glue along the edge there And then a 
bit of persuasion there. And you will find, I mean, especially with using this particular um, deck or die, that there's not a lot of space between the two. So that's why you kind of want to keep an eye on sort of how far. Um, how far along and up and down you're going with it. Yikes. So yeah, you kind of almost want to look at it from the front and from the back. And there we go. So then that creates our little um, stage to begin with. Then all you need to do, really simple from that point, you just add all your bits inside um, and then add a little bit of glue onto there. Stick that down. Now when you stick it down, I recommend that you push it all to one side and you stick it down like that because that way you will know that it will go flat in your envelope. For some bizarre reason, mine will go flat that way, but it won't go flat the other way. I, I actually don't quite know why, but so long as it goes flat one way, it's not going to matter. <laughs> um, so there you go. I will finish this one off. I'm pretty sure you don't need to watch me finishing it off. I'm quite sure that you're capable of doing that, um, doing things like this on your own. Um, and I'm going to pop it up on my blog when I finish so you can check it out. And do feel free to share the love if you have enjoyed the video. And come back and join me next Saturday. Thanks for joining me. Bye.